Proverbs chapter 19. Another better. I guess when the Bible says better, it's better. Better is the poor. You wouldn't think so. And you think poor, you know. Better is the poor that walketh in his integrity. That's interesting. Than he that is perverse with his lips and is a fool. So God, the Holy Spirit, tells Solomon, says, Solomon, you're the richest man. I want you to write down, better is a poor man than somebody who's a liar and a fool and perverse. You know, somebody who lies, you know, somebody who's perverse. A poor man, you know, who, who sticks to a character. Character in the Bible is, 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 a, is a wonderful thing. And ought not be shattered. But a character can be shattered so quickly. You need to keep it guarded. You need to keep it worn. Be poor with a character than perverse lips. Also that the soul be without knowledge. Okay. Spiritual matters. It is not good. And he that hastes with his feet sinneth. In a hurry to go sin. You ought to have the knowledge of the holy. Because knowledge of the holy means you can obtain the salvation that God desires for you to have. To, to acknowledge the will that God has. Listen, God has a will for every man. The, the first thing is, you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ be saved. The second will of God is to be a witness. The third will of God is to be baptized. And then get in your Bible, get into preaching, get into a Bible-believing church, and get into prayer, and get into witnessing. And you got to know what is expected of you. You're not to go run to go do wicked and, and stupid things that are ungodly. When I mean ungodly, is whatever God doesn't want you to do. The foolishness of man perverteth his way. So education, that's, you know, that's the thing of man, perverteth his way from God. They educate you according to Romans 1, profess themselves to be someone, but they're fools, turns you out of the way of God, makes you perverse, and rather to be poor, verse 1, Because they'll teach you with their lips, perverse lips. And his heart fretteth against the Lord, irritated, bugged. Ever witness to somebody and they just get on your case? They get angry with you? Maybe verse 3 applies to their heart. You know, when you get that person that's angry with you, God's dealing with that person. It's the one that just walks on by, doesn't say nothing. That's the one, you know, who, who cares? When that guy gets you in your face and starts screaming at you, why? What's the reason? Why would a little piece of paper upset somebody? Why would the Bible and Scripture, maybe God's dealing with that heart. Maybe it's irritated. Maybe it's bugged. You know, you, you ever think... I don't know. There's weird things I think about reading the Bible and all that, but I don't think a seed has feelings. But when you water it, you know, next thing you know, it's all drowned by water. I mean, how'd you like to be drowned all by water and then left to dry out and be uh, arid? Wealth maketh many friends. That's a plain, simple fact. Look at that. Is that. Is, is that verse really so hard that, you know, I'm what other perverted Bibles say about that verse. That's simple. But the poor separated from his neighbors. A division. Listen, you may not like the word division in the Bible, segregation, James 2, 2. But there is a segregation of wealth and poor. And this poor guy is not the one that did it. It says the poor is separated from his neighbor. People rather hang out with wealthy people than they do with poor people. 
Listen, when you see these stars go down to soup kitchens and all that, they don't, don't think that that's a normal everyday thing. Where are they when the cameras are off? You know, maybe maybe some of them do, but I'm saying majority of them, they're not down there all the time. It's probably a show. It's probably, you know, for a new movie coming up. or Because the Bible says that you'll be with the rich the more they will be with the poor. You know? A false witness, a liar, shall not be unpunished. So all those people that witness against Jesus Christ a lie before the Sanhedrin, they will go unpunished. Politicians will go unpunished. No, that's not what the Bible says. This will not go unpunished. They are going to pay for their sins. They may lie to you to get the vote, but they're going to stand before Jesus Christ one day in the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, and they will be punished. How much more if you vote for that guy who lied to you to get your vote? You think God's just going, to, oh, okay, you voted for that liar. Oh, yeah, good little boy. You, you placed your vote. Yeah, you see what happens when you vote for the liars. You fall. The Bible says you're to be integrity. You're to be prudent. And he that speaketh lies shall not escape. Used car salesmen and salesmen will stand before the judge. Save or lost. Acts 6.13, Exodus 20.16, Revelation 21.8. And heed to those verses. I don't know how many, how many words that stood before Jesus Christ and lied to the Pharisees about him, but they will be called up before the same Jesus Christ, the one who, who will be crowned with crowns and, and dressed in royalty. Not that bleeding, not that spit upon. And say, what was that lie you said about me? Open the gospel and show them what I told them in reality. As he says in John, we learned last night that the word will be judged against them. I judge not the word will judge. He said he destroyed the temple in three days, raised it up. And open the gospel and show them what I talked about. Because we just read tonight in our family and spoke of his body. Not the stone, not the bricks. Even I understood that. And me, dummy. Many will entreat the favor of the prince. You know, the policy, you know, hey, you know, begging, help me out, I'm in trouble. Hey, if I flip you something, you think you can give me some business? And you know, you know, there are people who won't buy car seats. If, if I give you a, a, a campaign, will you make it a law that you have to get car seats? Because they're not buying them. Hey, Mr. President, they're not buying our health insurance. Can you make it a law? And they don't even do it like that. Can you make it a, a, a law on the taxes that they have to pay a fine? You know, that's the entreat favor. That's the begging of the prince. Help me and I'll help you. You better believe. You better believe in Capitol Hill of America. There is lying and there is cheating and there's all kinds of ruckus of sin. I'm going to vote for one Christian into office. You're going to, you're going to throw a clean Christian into a pot of doo-doo sewer? And you think after he's been swimming around with that, he's going to be coming out nice and clean like, like a bar of soap? Really? You think you if you vote a Christian into, into office, he's... Really? Sure. Okay. You can wake up reality now and... Hit the snooze button. And and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. Bribe. Right. 
Americans and all people love to receive and give gifts. Every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. What kind of friend? And to somebody else gives a better and, and, and gracious more gift than what, what you just gave? Will you still be his friend? I mean, if I had somebody and I baked a nice apple pie for them, hey, you're my friend. Thank you very much. I like apple pie. And somebody comes along and, and gives him a, a necklace of pure of pearls, fine pearls, the best pearls. Who do you think is going to be more friend to him? What if the one that gives the pearls has a different cause than what I have for giving him an apple pie? There is a price. Even Satan went up to Jesus and thought Jesus had a price to fall down and worship before him. I'll give you all this. Well, sorry, he's going to get in anyway. All the brethren of the poor do hate him. So when a group of people tell you, oh, we're going to help the poor, we're, no, 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 you hate them. There's a guy that opened up an office down in uh, 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 the Bronx, New York. How many times was he actually there? Him personally and his wife and his family. When was the last time you heard any president from George Washington to Barack Obama bite poor people in the house to come stay the weekend with him? Hmm? How many of the presidential children had poor people from the public school, 586 or whatever, come in with the poor little kids and had a pajama party? Really? You know? The brethren of the poor. Their own family. There's Uncle Fred over there. You know, he second removed and twice over and lives in a trailer. And he may love the Lord Jesus Christ, have the greatest joy in his heart, and can sing about it. How much more do his friends go far from him? If, the, if his family hates him because he's poor, even his friends. Now, we've been targeted. It says in verse 24 of the previous chapter, a man, that find, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. There is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Match that down to what we did. Here's your brother in verse 7, and here's a friend. You know the test of friendship according to verse 7, chapter 19? When you go down and out and you lose everything. Bye. He pursues them with words, yet they are wanting to him. Help me, help me. Can you, can you spare something? I can get back on my feet. Now, the poor here are legitimate, pure, poor people. You say, what is a pure, poor person? Life situation has caused them to be. And they're not lazy. Because we've been reading so far 18 chapters. We're in the 19th chapter. And we read about the, the, the slothful. We read about the lazy person. We read about people who don't want to do nothing. This is somebody who may be a medical. This is somebody whose job. This may be somebody that doesn't want to be like this, but is in the circus. They're in the, the stance of life that, you know what, they can't make it. And we've got in America today, we've got people who work for a living and are poor because they can't get the hours, they can't get the wages, they can't get the help. From the big money bucks, people who hate them, and you know, will get you just enough hours, but not over. Sorry, can't do that. Cause I may have to dish more money out than I can. I want you to be this career. I want you to be this career. I want you to be this career. I want you to be this career, and all this under my thumb. But I'm not going to pay you no more. Where? 
outside of the real world, that, that that career that he makes you do, they get $14 an hour. That career that you do on him, they get $18 an hour. That career they get on him gets 9 bucks an hour, and you're getting a minimum wage. <clears throat> you better believe that God's going to judge you because he says he, he goes for fair and just balances. You better watch out. I'm telling you why. Jesus Christ is coming. And he's going to be angry. He's a lion this time. Rawr! He that gives wisdom loveth his own soul. Well, look at that. Look at that. True wisdom of God will, will deal with your soul, the righteousness, that eternal part of you, to know what God wants from you. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I got my own religion. You ain't wise. You're dumb. You're a fool. There's no God. Hey, Lucifer, you're a fool. You are a fool. He that keepeth Understanding shall find good. Galatians 6 9. Don't faint. That's wisdom and that understanding is the relationship to God. What's the knowledge? To know Jesus Christ. What's the wisdom? How to apply Jesus Christ? You don't eat him. You don't bring him to North America. You don't say he's not God. You believe him as the Son of God, the virgin birth, that he is God. He saved my soul upon that cross. Three days later, he left that tomb alive and said at the hand of God right now, and it's coming for me one day. What's the understanding? What can I do for him? Not what I can what he can do for me. But what can I do for him? And God looks down and says, Son, I love that guy down there. I love him too, Father. Man, he's his he, he's a sinner, but you know, he loves us. He, give him more. I pray to God, God has given me so much understanding, wisdom, and knowledge of his word, and I feel so so low down that I don't apply as much as I should, and I feel that we're standing before judgment and God has revealed this to me, and I'm not using it right. I don't feel like I am shoveling out more than what he shovels into me. I think God's given me a whole bunch of buckets and, and barrels of coal, but I ain't shoveling out for enough heat. Enough fire for others to get the warmth of the Holy Spirit. I'm not doing enough. And then when I see these videos, sometimes I see where they go. That's still not enough in my eyes. It's not enough. It's not enough. A false witness, boy, look at that showing up again, shall not be unpunished. And he that speaketh lies shall perish. You match that with five. Wouldn't it be great, people? Wouldn't it be great if we had the Pinocchio nose? Every time a lie, uh, your nose would grow, the, the matching word for politics would be duck! What about these words we used to say when we were children? I wish they were real. Liar, liar, your pants are on fire. <laughs> Woo! That would be great in a courtroom. All right, what you just said, you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I'll help you guys. Yes, I do. Now stand up. Ah, look, he's naked. That would be real great. You wouldn't need judges. He that speaketh lies shall perish. Isn't that one of the things that says liars shall not be in part of the New Jerusalem? Isn't this great? The night of the eve of voting, we're talking about false witnesses and liars. Praise God! And some of you are not like her, but you want me to go vote for some of these people? You want my blood to be upon putting somebody who's a liar in office. Really? All right, go out and give somebody a gospel about the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the truth. Sanctify through thy word. Thy word is truth. All right, preach the word. 
You know what? I may not vote. You may not like it. But at least when I preach the word, get out to me. There'll be people unhappy in heaven because I preach the word to them. You want to vote? That's your own. That's your own thing. Some of you may hate me because I don't vote. Oh well. God doesn't hate me because I get the word out. I get the truth out. Well, America's going bad. You need. Yeah, amen! The more America goes bad, the more Jesus will be coming quicker. Don't try to fix it up. Let it go. Because Jesus will come. You know, they stopped the taxation in the book of Luke. They would never got Mary and Joseph down to Bethlehem to be counted, and Jesus wouldn't have been born yet. Thank God there was no tea party in the days of, of Mary's pregnancy. Go back and read. Uh, go back and get the audio for Luke and the video about Luke. We're studying and find out what, what why God had the tax pro program. The light is not seemly for a fool. Wow, that's interesting. He glasses 2 8, Song, Song of Solomon 3 6. True Joy, Psalm 1 1, and Psalm 32 11. Much less for a servant to have rule over princesses. Princes. God is not into equal rights. Can you imagine in the White House? Here are all these officials in the White House, and the cook comes up in the Oval Office, steps in there and says, if we send this army over here, we will conquer and win Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever. That would be degrading in that office of all these people that got all the, 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 the pins and needles and everything else on their chest. And somebody comes up from the cook, from the you know, puts the broom down, and says, "Mr. President, we got to do this in this country. That that'd be that'd be disgrace." We've put in people into Washington D.C. in the control of this country who has never even seen what the inside of a toilet bowl looks like. They wouldn't know what a plunger is for if you gave them detailed instructions. Man, if they can't unclog a toilet, how are they going to unclog the mess that they're making? When you get a servant, he's made mistakes, and he's learned from his mistakes because they've been costly mistakes. It's a guy who's lived life, a guy who his whole life depends upon what he's doing. And if he fails at that moment, when a farmer fails, his whole family is going to suffer for two or three seasons, if not four or five, till the next crop comes along. If that construction guy goes belly up until the next contract, maybe the next four contracts to get back on his feet. You got greenhouse plants showing up in Washington, D.C., who's never lived a life in there, had everything given to them. The discretion, that's what's lacking. To be careful. The discretion of man deferreth his anger. I got Mark 3 5 and Ephesians 4 26. You can be angry, but sin not. I blew it the other night. I didn't use discretion. But thanks to God's mercy and grace. I used discretion last night. See, I learned. You know, bitterness is not always good. Put a little, put a little sugar in the coffee and it tastes good. Don't put pickle juice in coffee. That's not good. And it, it is his glory to pass over transgression. 
when somebody's done him wrong, it's glory to have him put his arm around you and say, it's okay, I forgive you. And you don't, we've learned from the verses that we've done, the chapters we've done so far, you don't keep going after it. You know, it's it's wrong for a wife or for a husband to keep nagging each other about past things. Get over it. He bought you roses. She made you a special meal. Get over it. It is to your glory and marriage to say, hey, let's move onward and upward. Because if you don't, it results in bitterness. The king's wrath is as a roaring lion. The king Jesus Christ. I bet you, I don't know, I bet you all the animals run when they hear that in the jungle. I would. I bet you all the humans, when they hear a lion roar, hey, where is he? That's just a roar. They ain't the bite. If you were smart, you heard a lion roar. Oh, there's a lion nearby. Like a rattlesnake. Stop. Where do I walk? Where is he? Only a fool will go head on. But his favor is as dew upon the grass. Esther 7, 8, and 9. Uh, no, wait a minute. Take that back. Esther 7, 8. 1 Kings 2, 27. The entire chapter. I don't know. That's 1 Kings 2. But the second advent of Lord Jesus Christ ain't going to be like the first advent. Do you know the people in the second advent are going to be praying to the mountain? Fall on us! Hide us from that one! When they go into the cave, they'll be taking all their idols and chucking it into the bats. You better trust in that little lamb that came. The lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. Rather than the lion of God, which take away the sinners of the world. I like that. Do is present. No one can produce do. But God. And if you want to study, you want to do an outside study, study do and study it with your Bible. A foolish son is a calamity of his father. Oh, there's that boy again. Always get in trouble. Stupid as anything. Schoolyard dunce. And a contentious of a wife are continued dropping. Now, what is that? Drip, drip, drip. Drip, 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 drip. Stop! It's a leaky roof. It's a leaky uh, faucet. Just drip, drip, drip. Wife, you better not be a drip to your husband. And if you're a Christian, man, he's praying to God against you. God, stop that leak. Drip, drip. And you know what? That drip will cause more and more damage. That washer in the faucet is getting more and more weared away in time. That hole from the roof is, is getting more and more rotted. It doesn't get better. Houses, uh, excuse me, house and riches are the inheritance of fathers. Oh, look at that. Fathers are to pass on to inheritance to their children. And a prudent wife is of the Lord. 
Proverbs 18, 22. So a foolish son is likened to a, the contentions of a wife. The inheritance of, of the father is, is likened to the prudence of a wife. A wife that knows what she's supposed to be doing. She knows her place and doesn't step out of line. Meals, clothing are all prepared. Timely. Groceries. Wait till we get to Proverbs 31 you find out what a prudent wife really is. She ain't just barefoot and pregnant. She don't, a, a wife does not need an outside job. When you get studying the Proverbs about a wife, you find out she's got plenty of work in the house to do. There's no time for uh, the sudsy programs and the, uh, and the telephones and junk like that. Slothfulness. There's a lazy. Casts into a deep sleep. And an idle soul shall suffer hunger. You ain't going to work. Too lazy. Unless you're in America. And you don't even have to walk to the mailbox today. It gets put electronically right into your account. Lazy. Used to be for the postman, his, his most daily exercise would be the first of the month. Now he's relieved. Snooze alarm. The body wants more sleep than it's needed. He that keepeth the commandment keepeth his own soul. Old Testament. You had to keep the commandments to live. God's commandment for us today in his church is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the commandment today. But he that despises his ways, God's ways, shall die. Death. No eternal life. So if you didn't keep the commandments in the Old Testament, you died. You don't keep Jesus Christ as your Savior. You don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, I am saying, today, you will die. You will perish. He that has pity upon the poor. Well, look at this. Well, before I read this verse, can I have some money? I need some food. I'll tell you what. I'll take you over to this restaurant. I'll take you, I'll take you over to this convenience store. You get what you need. And I will pay for it. Really? Yes, I will. Can I get a drink too? Yep. You get yourself a, 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 like a sandwich if they got one. Get yourself a bag of chips and you get yourself any kind of drink you want. I'll pay for it. You go walk in the store, man. He gets himself a tuna fish sandwich. He gets himself a bag of Doritos. And he gets him. Can I get a big Pepsi? Get yourself a big Pepsi. Go ahead. He gets himself a big Pepsi. And you pay for it, and, and then you give them a gospel track. You say, I give you this, all this, in the name of Jesus Christ. Have a good day. You say, what would you do? He that, hath, he that hath pity on the poor lendeth unto the Lord. The Lord takes it personal. When you do something in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to help somebody who really needs help, God calls over one of the angels. I don't know which one. He goes, Angel, why were you about? Come over here. Open up the book. Yeah, open the book. Write the count for my saint there on this date. Write down a tuna fish sandwich, big bottle of Pepsi, and a bag of Doritos. Lord, yeah, what's Dorito? Just write it down. What's a Pepsi? Write it down. Okay. Why? Because he gave me, that guy, that saint that loves me, that my son loves him, gave me a tuna fish sandwich, a bag of Doritos, and a Pepsi. Thank you. Where? Just write it down. You ever give him God a tuna fish sandwich, a bag of Doritos, and a Pepsi? Do you know, you, go in the Bible and study the Bible and find out every time Jesus asked for a drink, and what, what he got in return. He says, I thirst. They gave him vinegar and gall. He says, give me a drink of water. He didn't get one. 
but you have the opportunity to give God a tuna fish sandwich, a bag of Doritos, and a big Pepsi. How about that? And that goes on your account. And you give that guy a gospel check. I mean, what if with that thing right there? What if you were part of the increase of God and that guy would go into his glory by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ because of a tuna fish sandwich, a bag of Doritos, and a big Pepsi? How about that? When I tied to the church, is it before or after that? Yeah, 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 yeah. We know who you love. And that which he hath giveth will he pay him again. God will take care of you. God gave the rich to help the poor. 2 Corinthians 8, 14, 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. Don't you worry about well, the rich people. God gave them to help the poor. If they don't help the poor, they are not giving unto God, and they will give an account. You never thought of that, did you? And you don't do what the government does. You take from somebody else to give to somebody. That's not right. That's called stealing. And you will be held accountable. How about giving some of your money? Chasing thy son. Well, can we go back and talk about lying? Chasing thy son while there is hope. The blessed hope from our great, great God and the Savior, Jesus Christ. That's a hope. And also, then while there is hope. That means all during that child's life, while he's under your authority, under your rule, you chasing him. Young. Before they build their character, you build that character in them. And let not be so I'm amazing how they cry before they even get it. It's like, turn it off. The Bible said, you know, it's amazing. You make the Bible so true because you're already crying before you even started. Oh, <laughs> you haven't started. They're crocodile tears. And you know what that shows? If they cry like that before it's even done, you know what? They're little sinners because they know how to, to play on you. The Bible says correction. You know what happens when you don't correct your children? Saved or lost, you'll give an account before God. You will have to give an account for those children you raised, that God gave you. And they are a blessing to you, the Bible says. They are a fruitful vine, the wife that God's given you. A man of great wrath shall suffer punishment. Hmm. Well, look at Adolf Hitler. Look at all the Catholics during the, the Inquisition period. You're going to get punishment for your deeds. For if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. Do you know what that verse is talking about? Your Honor, my client pleads not guilty. All right, $1 million bail, pay, goes out, and he does it again. Oh, I served my six years, I'm out, does it again. Bail and jail time sometimes does not work. Anger management classes. Just because he did his time, you think that he's done with? That's like the kid that's crying. Oh, yeah, I'm so good now. I thank you for these classes. I am so great. I learned so much. And he gets out and gets angry and kills somebody called road rage because somebody cut him off. Hear counsel 
and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in their latter end. Get advice from the right people so that the end thereof won't be destruction. Like the king that Jesus said, you know, we better sit down and figure out how many troops we need. We may not have enough. I got to build a tower. I got to sit down and make sure I have enough. You know what that end was? It was a half-built tower. There are, there are buildings in probably every community, every county, not every city or town. That there's one building there that you look at that and say, the guy never finished. <laughs> oh, he had great plans. But what's the end thereof? Unfinished. You better take that as being a Bible-believing, born-again Christian. You better adhere to your preacher. You better adhere to the Christians around you. And you better realize what your life is going to be. That you may finish your course. Fight the good fight. Fight! Be known that a Christian is a fighter. God gives you an armor. Let it be known. There are many devices in a man's heart. Oh boy, I tell you there is. Good, bad, wicked, righteous. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is, a, is a wicked above all things. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. What is it? The, the ways of a man's heart are right in his own eyes, but the Lord will try the spirits. Well, this is... We were listening the other day, the satanic stuff like that, the, the teaching. Her, and believe your own heart. Follow your heart. Your heart will never lie to you. Memorize Jeremiah 17, 9. The desire of a man is his kindness. Men are kind. A poor man is better than a liar. Wow. You see what God thinks? God is not into liars. So what do you do with a perverted Bible? What do you do with a preacher behind behind a pulpit? That lies. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. Psalms 19 verse 9. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved. He that has not the Son shall see the wrath of God abide upon him. The condemnation. And he that has it shall abide satisfied. He shall not be visited with evil. Oh, look at that verse. Well, I had evil. Yeah, because you got evil for the evil that you done. You reap what you sowed. But naturally, if you do what God expects you to do, well, I witness and I get all kinds of trouble. Be not to see. I'm not. Uh, oh man, unless. Yeah, they they that suffer. Uh, they that. All they that suffer persecution. All they that suffer suffering Christ. Oh, boy, I've really blown that verse. He said, "Well, I'm getting evil." You were told. You will get suffering, but it's not evil. It's a joy to God. That's what they did to Jesus. But to get evil in your life is because you have done evil. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And think about that for a minute. Persecution is not evil in God's eyes. It's a natural reaction to the Bible. Now, if you get a bad liver from drinking booze, oh, look at the evil, I got a ferocious liver. Hey, you asked for it. You know, you got to be careful. Listen, if, if, if you live to what God wanted you to do, you will get right in God's, in God's eyes. Now, Satan won't be happy, and he'll be throwing stuff at you. 
You know why Job got the evil, you know, the loss of the children, the loss of everything? Because he was self-righteous. He was in sin. And God used Satan to bring that out in him and for him to repent and get right. So it wasn't evil. It was chastisement, verse 18. Don't say mom and dad are evil because they spanked my hiney. It's not evil. You deserve what you got. You see what I mean? I'll tell you what evil will be for a child. You don't correct them and you let them go out there and get a gun and shoot a whole entire school. You ever wonder maybe if God will charge that to the parents too? A slothful man, lazy man, hideth his hand in his bosom, in his pocket, and will not so much as bring it to his own, bring it to his mouth again. He won't even feed himself. He's going to have somebody feed it to him. He won't work for it. So he lets somebody pay his own bills. He's lazy. Smite a scorner. <laughs> You believe in Jesus. Remember the corner from chapter 1? And the simple chapter 1 will beware. Why'd you answer that guy like that? Because there may be a simple person out there watching or listening and be a witness to. You got to stand up for God, you got to stand up for the Bible. How come high school can have debate classes, but on the street when you're dealing with somebody with the Bible, you can't? Oh, that's rude. Do it in a proper fashion, too, may I add. And reprove one that has understanding, and he will understand knowledge. Somebody who knows, you know, help them, guide them, show them where they're wrong with the Bible. And they will gain, they will learn. He that wastes his father. Luke 15, 11 through 17. And chases away his mother. He uses his father and tells mom, get away from me. Get out of here. Is a son that causes shame and bringeth reproach. What's the shame when he stands before God? Because there's no shame in America today. Cast my, uh, cease my son to hear the instruction. Talking to Rehoboam. That causes to err from the words of knowledge. If it causes you to turn away from the Bible, get away from it. If it goes against what the Bible says, get away from it. And quickly get your nose back in the word. Quickly. All right. A ungodly witness, scornous judgment. Oh, that's America. And the mouth of the wicked devoureth iniquity. Yum, 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 yum. Judgments are prepared for the scorners. How do you like that? Not in America. Oh. In fact, the police will lock up the, the, the preacher and then keep the scorners and stripes it's the whipping for the back of fools you know they they whip Jesus they call Jesus a fool I would not want to be at the judgment end on the other side of Jesus when when Jesus says okay you whipped me like a fool when I was innocent three times 